Mysteriosa, a Mad Max saga. Does it live up to the hype of its predecessors? Eh, your mileage may vary. Get it? Your mileage may vary. Cars. Chases. Yeah, so George Miller, my hat's off to the man. He's at age 79. He's doing the He's outdoing a lot of the action movie directors to this day. He's still cranking out movies. It's so much energy, so much passion. It's it's admirable, and I really appreciate seeing it. I loved Fury Road. I actually spent the weekend looking at all the Mad Max series, uh, from Mad Max 1 all the way up to Beyond Thunderdome. Um, but we're here to talk about Furiosa and Mad Max Saga. What do I think? I'm going to talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, and some of my personal thoughts. The actress that played the young Imperador, Furiosa, I believe her name is Ayla Brown. She she was like, she was electric. She was she did her damn thing in the movie. She had the same intensity. She reminded me of Daphne Keene and Logan. That same like she's very you know she's 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 tiny, but you could you could sense the fear. You can sense the strength. You can sense the anger. And she gave. Probably like one of the best performances next to Chris Hemsworth um, in, the, in the movie. I actually believed that she was a young version of Furiosa. And she had like almost a resemblance to Charlize Theron's uh, version. But it, she provided her own flair to it, which, which showed through. And I really appreciate it. I also like Chris Hemsworth's Dr. Dementis. You can tell he had a ball in this film. I'm, I'm glad to see that he's showing more of his range. I always knew that he was a great actor. Okay? But I feel in this movie, particular he was just able to kind of just let loose and have fun still be a little bit reserved um but you know have a lot more fun a lot more energy and he was menacing there are times where he was menacing i i did i wasn't afraid of him i guess the only downside with it i wasn't afraid of him as much as i'm sorry morton joe but in terms of this movie and, and the tone that he set um i think he did a great job some of the things i didn't like um Unfortunately, this movie felt like two movies in one, so to speak. If you've seen Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, the third film in the series, it's a tale about how Max is, you know, he, he wanders into a new settlement and he's trying to get his car back. You know, his, his car is always being taken. He's trying to get his car back and he's, he's approached by Auntie Entity. And he wants to work for her in order to get his car back. In order for him to pay Auntie Entity back, he has to fight in a Thunderdome against one of these villainous bosses called Master and Blaster. Master is the small one, the diminutive one, and Blaster is his brother. Um, he's really big and stuff like that. He manages to win, and during the course of the movie, it takes a turn where Max is exiled. In the desert, he disobeys one of the laws within the settlement. And Tina Turner puts him on the wheel, and it basically spins to exile. And he's sent down to the desert, and he finds a village full of young children. And from that moment on, the movie, in terms of tone and pace, grinds to a halt. You can tell over from Mad Max 1, where there's a frenetic energy. Um, there was violence, you know, it was almost like gonzo, guerrilla style filmmaking. And then over the course of like towards the road warrior, you can see George Miller kind of breaking open the story and scope. And then towards Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, there is the scope gets even bigger, but it seems like it's trying to fit into this like PG-13 Goonies, E.T., like aesthetic i want to make mad max more appealing to a broader audience you know we have tina turner as a villain for american audiences and stuff like that and you could tell like the film kind of fighting itself to kind of fit in but the energy of the past films diminishes up until the last 32 minutes i believe it's 32 or 35 minutes of mad max beyond a thunderdome where it gets right back to how mad max is like the car chases the violence not on the scale of previous ones more for that movie Furiosa, um, a Mad Max saga, is somewhat the same thing. The first half, and I don't want to spoil any of the story, 
I want you guys to experience for yourself. But the first half is Furiosa being kidnapped. You know, she's 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 not someone who's shy. She's not someone who's I wouldn't say innocent, but she's not she's not scared of life. She's she's willing to stand up to life on, on its terms. And you can see her fighting back to her pursuers in every way. She's being as ingenuitive as possible. She's using all the tools available to her. And she's she's going toe to toe with like bigger, gruffer people who are just, you know, who know who are gonna do God knows what to her. But the 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 energy, the impact of those scenes is felt throughout that first half. And this movie's told in chapters, so I think the first two chapters are with young Furiosa. And you can feel the moment when they graduate Furiosa to Anya Taylor-Joy, who, who's a fantastic actress. I have no qualms with Anya Taylor-Joy. She, her intensity in this movie is, is, is unparalleled. She, she does a great job with her roles. She does bring, like, a hearkening back to Charlize Theron, who's, like, the template. Um, but she also gets her own spin. But in terms of who, in terms of not only the energy, but who I prefer to see more, um, it was probably Elise, Elise, Elila Brown's character when she was younger. Um, it just felt more, there's more energy and, and, vi and vivacious within those two chapters, first two chapters. And I feel like it just grinded to a halt towards the later half. And that's that's saying a lot because the last three to five chapters are nothing but violence and action, stuff like that. And, you know, they try to put in like kind of a semi love element. They try to put in, you know, these like callbacks to Mad Max without being Mad Max, they even show what looks like to be Mad Max. Cause this is a prequel between Furiosa is a prequel between Fury Road. And I believe, uh, Mad Max, uh, two. I believe that's yeah, the world warrior. I think we're not even approaching beyond on the dome. So it sits between that nice, like Goldilocks zone in terms of story. And I could be wrong, but I think I read somewhere there. It sits between those two. Anyway, I felt Anya Taylor joy. She wasn't in the movie as much, even though she has like three additional chapters over Alila Brown's. I felt, and I hate to say this. I, I felt, be, I wouldn't say because she didn't have a lot of dialogue, I just felt the scope and the focus of the film kind of deviated from the pace of where this movie was trying to go. Like Re Revenge Tales, they don't need to be three hour long epics. I think a good revenge tale can be an hour and a half, an hour 60. If you get to those beats, if you if you establish it and, you know, George Miller, I'm he has like he's the expert in this in this drama. He's done Mad Max all the way up to now, but I just felt the energy was lacking towards the tail end of the movie and only kind of got back within the scant, like 30 minutes, 32 minutes where it got back to OG Mad Max, that same energy. So it was, it was, it was very off. It was like high energy, Mad Max esque energy in the first half. Then it kind of like plateaued in the third and fourth, fifth chapters. And then towards the tail end of the fifth chapter, the energy went right back up. So it was very wop, wop, topsy turvy. And I know this film was written by George Miller and uh, Nick Lathoris, who also wrote uh, Fury Road with Brendan McCarthy and George Miller. But I feel either not having either Brendan McCarthy or either not letting George Miller take the reins. I, I don't know the dynamic. I don't know where the dynamic in terms of the writing and how they split duties, but I felt that the overall scope of the film was grander than Fury Road, but I felt the focus was way off. It was just, it was just, it was just all over the place. And you can tell in some of the characters, you know, how they would, they had a nice eccentricity to themselves. And then it just kind of like fell by the wayside. Whereas when I was watching Fury Road, Every scene with every character, I was locked in because they didn't stay on them too long. But when they when the camera was on them, they were able to shine and they gave enough energy, enough gravitas to that scene, whether it was wacky energy or whether it was like potent, heartbreaking energy. It, it, it was better crafted, more streamlined than what was in Furiosa. 
I kind of want to add, and also some of the things I didn't like, uh, the cinematography. It was fine. The cinematography for cinematography was fine. They used uh, Simon Duggan, I believe Simon Duggan, Duggan. Um, he also uh, did cinematography for iRobot, Underworld Evolution, and The Great Gatsby. So if you like those films, if you like how they looked, Simon Duggan is, is Duggan is your man. Unfortunately, he took over for the previous uh, cinematographer, Fury Road, who I believe retired. Yeah, John Sale, who actually came out of retirement, according to uh, Google and Wikipedia, I'm sorry. He came out of retirement to do Fury Road. And then after that, he went back. He's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not coming back. But you can tell how great of a cinematographer he is. Um, when I think back to Fury Road, I love the look. The look of the film was immediate. And I hate to keep jumping back to Fury Road. But I feel like Furiosa set itself up to that be that way because Fury Road was such a masterpiece that I don't know if they didn't want to leave it alone and they wanted to at least try to push this, the narrative forward as far as Furiosa as a character. But I feel the look and the energy was a downgrade from what Fury Road was. And in some parts, the writing too. Like the, the writing had its ups and downs, but it wasn't nearly as, as tight as Fury Road. And that's kind of, I, I guess you need some time. You need to have, your writing needs to be tight. The pacing needs to be tight for a lot of these action movies. For the ones that are memorable, to me, it, it's just, it's like a full clip. It's like, I don't even know that two hours are going by. And I hate to admit it. I mean, I fell asleep on a lot of those parts. So towards tail ends, I feel that there was more story to tell. And it, apparently there is. They're, they're doing a sequel to uh, Fury Road. I believe it's Mad Max, The Wasteland. So Nick Thoris is working on that as well. But um, I feel that this movie, since it had so much story and kind of controlled the pacing a little bit to kind of tell that story, I feel it would have been better as a series, um, whether on HBO or Amazon or whatever. Um, and I know, you know, sometimes I talk about, you know, I hate streaming. And it's, I don't really hate streaming. I just hate how they are just pushing out content and not giving like its quality. But there are examples within streaming where they're treating shows with respect. I mean, Fallout is a case example. I wish Furiosa got the Fallout treatment is what I'm trying to say, where we were able to kind of delve into the role, the character, the mythos of Furiosa. In a in a more detailed, more well paced uh, clip, where you can expand on as many characters and as many plot points as you want to, leading up to Anya Taylor Joy, you know, being the actual Furiosa, because they they're marketing this with Anya Taylor Joy, the posters and stuff like that on the marketing materials, and she's barely in the movie. And when she's in the movie, she's barely talking, which there's not a problem because you know, Matt Max. Tom Hardy was in Fury Road. He barely talked and he was on screen for, he, he was on screen for, I, I would say more than what Furiosa was, but he probably had less lines than what Furiosa has, is what I'm trying to say. So if you can imagine those kind of, those kind of terms. Um, but anyway, yeah, I felt this movie would have been better as a series versus a movie. I think it would have helped the pacing issues, but that energy, it, it Mad Max has been a, franchise built on frenetic crazy chaos wasteland energy a message within the series of mad max but the message doesn't come at the cost of the energy the action um you know mad max wrestling with you know am i turning into the demons um that i'm becoming and i felt like as the movies went on george miller and his writing team kind of wanted to answer that question and with now these remakes that are coming through and prequel prequel makes whatever um they have a chance to kind of dip back into the well and re-examine mad max you know in that in that manner so i heard i don't know if it's a room if it's a rumor or if it's, if it's factual that apparently mel gibson is thinking about it or i i don't know how how how, how that is but um I, I mean, I guess that would be great, you know, like, like Old Man Logan type vibe to it, you know. I guess that would be great, but if we're not willing to, like, jump back into, like, the core 
of what Mad Max, even if Mad Max is in the movie, not in the movie, just staying on that energy. And I keep saying energy, 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 but it is true. Like I shouldn't fall asleep in a Mad Max film. And maybe because I'm old, like <laughs> maybe because I'm old, maybe it's because I had the itis when I ate my you new, know, my food at the movie theater. And I'll, I'll, I'll take the blame for that. But I don't think that's the case. I think I lost interest pretty much like I lost Beyond Thunderdome because they were trying to cram too much without fully fleshing it out. And it was coming, it was, it was things that are disparate from one another. And it didn't gel like Mad Max 1 through 2 in Fury Road. So I, I think those are my three favorite Mad Max films. So if I had to give it a score, um, it's good to see, but I, I would probably wait for streaming. Um, you know, I, I want everyone to like the su support movie theaters and stuff like that. But I really wished when I saw this movie, I had expectations for it. I had expectations that it was going to be like Fury Road and it wasn't, it was a step down in so many ways from Fury Road. And on that note, I would probably like revise my review and say, wait for streaming and then make your own decision, you know, but that's up to you. That's all I got. Um, if you like what I had to say, feel free to like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great holiday weekend. See you later. Cabs out.